Many people in Ireland would be shocked to imagine that we have been conditioned by the media into hating a major part of our own culture and nation's history. But nonetheless, that is exactly what's happened. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. In the last year or two, it's become increasingly clear that Irish culture is under attack from the elites in this country. From last year's government proposal to commemorate the reviled black and tans, to proposals to remove statues of those who fought for our freedom, and even more recently, museums trying to remove Michael Collins' cap from public display, it's starting to look more and more like our history and heritage is under a systematic assault. We have mainstream media articles, which I've done videos debunking, blaming Ireland for our supposed role in the slave trade, even though we were once treated like slaves ourselves. We have UN officials accusing Ireland of having a colonial past to answer for when we were in fact brutalized and colonized ourselves. There's also a persistent push to remove history as a mandatory subject from schools, which would of course mean that the Irish people would not be able to identify attempts to rewrite our own history. In short, there are powerful people who, for whatever reason, want to discourage Irish people from being proud of our country and of those who are brave and courageous in our history. But there is another aspect of Irish culture which is under attack that rarely gets a look in and very few people in recent years have been willing to acknowledge or defend it. I am of course talking about religion. Now hold on a sec before you rush to the comments with pitchforks and torches let me clarify what I'm saying here. Of course nobody has to be personally religious. We all live in a free country and you can believe whatever you want. If you aren't religious that's totally your right. But it's very interesting to me how religion, particularly the Christian religion and Catholicism, has become unbelievably unpopular in modern society. Part of that is obviously because of the terrible scandals that have come to light in recent years. The sex abuse, the subsequent cover-ups and so on. We all know about the sick filth that went on, the corruption and the absolute evil that was carried out by some members of the church hierarchy and clearly those things were despicable. There is truly a special place in hell waiting for those responsible and they should be prosecuted to the maximum extent of the law. You'll hear absolutely no apologism from me. But the bit that I find curious is in our understandable haste to condemn all of those abominable crimes and discard Christianity, we never stop to think about what we might be discarding with it. To make a comparison, most people agree that the Irish government is a disgrace. From the cervical smear test scandal to their awful handling of the nursing homes and so on, the Irish state has a lot to answer for. But nobody looking at the appalling state of the current government would say, our politicians are all crooks and traitors, therefore I'm done with the Irish nation. Most people still love their country and acknowledge that Ireland is a wonderful place with lots of good to offer the world. Just because politicians are doing terrible things, that doesn't make you any less proud to be Irish. In fact, we say that the politicians who are ruling our country are usurping a great nation for their own gain. Ireland is great, but the opportunists in charge are ruining it. So why then, when there is corruption in the church, do we immediately throw out something that was so precious to our ancestors? We almost never acknowledge that one of the distinguishing features of the Irish rebels who fought for this country was their belief in God. Take Podrick Pierce as a perfect example. One of the main rebel leaders of the Rising, this man remains an incredibly popular figure to this day and is remembered widely as a brave hero who fought and died in the cause of Irish freedom. And yet we often forget that this man was a devout believer in God and that his Christian faith played a huge part of his life and in motivating him to save Ireland from the British Empire. As Pierce himself once said, One man can free a people as one man redeemed the world, referring to Jesus Christ's crucifixion. Speaking at the graveside of O'Donovan Rossa, Pierce said, I hold it a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, to hate oppression, and hating them, to strive to overthrow them. Again, in his own words, this man believed that fighting the oppression of Britain was the Christian thing to do. Pierce's sister, Mary, once referred to her brother by saying that his greatest devotion was to the tragedy of Calvary, to Christ crucified and the crucifix. But Pierce was not the only rebel leader who felt this way. Take Thomas McDonough, another signatory of the Proclamation of Independence, who, while he was waiting for his court-martial to be shot, described himself as 
part of a small section of the great unnumbered company of martyrs whose captain is the Christ who died on Calvary. Even James Connolly, the socialist who was critical of the church, wrote in February of 1916, shortly before his death, Without the slightest trace of irreverence, but in all due humility and awe, we recognize that of us, as of mankind before Calvary, it may be truly said that without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. Quoting a Bible passage about the death of Jesus Christ. James Larkin is another one. Larkin is largely seen as a socialist icon and trade union leader in Ireland, and that's mostly all he's remembered for. But Larkin routinely and vigorously affirmed his staunch belief in Catholicism in his speeches and writings. I belong to the Catholic Church. I stand by the cross and the Bible and I stand by Marx and his manifesto. I believe in the creed of the church, apostolic, catholic and roman. I believe in its saints and its martyrs, their struggles and the sufferings of my people. The history of Ireland is full of the same spirit, the same struggles, the same sufferings, the struggles and sufferings of my people. In my land this is not held against the socialist, it speaks for him. I defy any man here or anywhere to challenge my standing as a Catholic, as a Socialist or as a Revolutionist. We of the Irish Citizens Army take communion before we go into battle, we confess our sins, we seek absolution. If a bullet strikes, we hope to have the last rites administered to us before our souls leave our bodies. We do not let the church stand in the way of our struggle, but neither do we let our struggle stand in the way of the church. Almost all of the men you hear about as signatories of the Proclamation of Independence or rebels from that time were devout Christians. In fact, how does the proclamation itself begin and end? Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations. And then the last paragraph, We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessings we invoke upon our arms. References to God literally bookend the text at the beginning and the end. It encapsulated everything that they were trying to do and say. Are you starting to notice a pattern here by any chance? In fact, we always refer to the 1916 Rising these days, which is perfectly fine, but we often forget its other name, the Easter Rising. And ask yourself this, why did the rebels choose Easter week to mount their attack? Of all the 52 weeks in the year, why that one specifically? Well, the answer is simple. The rising was to symbolize Ireland being resurrected from the dead, just like Jesus Christ being resurrected in the gospel. That was an intentional parallel that they were trying to draw, and they chose that time for a reason. And the Easter rising is just one small part of our past. Take the penal laws, which are one of the greatest sources of conflict in Irish history. That was all about the persecution of Catholics. Under enormous pressure to convert to the Protestant religion, generations of Irish people for centuries were willing to suffer, fight and die for their Catholic religion. They didn't want to give it up, even under threat of terrible persecution and even death, because their faith was important to them. And of course, it wasn't just a Catholic thing. Wolf Tone was a Protestant, a fellow Christian who believed in God and was a great Irish patriot and hero. Have you ever heard the song O'Donnell Abu about Red Hugh O'Donnell, the great Irish nobleman and rebel who fought for this country against the crown? Well, are you aware that he was such a devout Catholic that in 1977 the Aid Rua O'Donnell Guild was formed in an attempt to get him recognised as a Catholic saint? Brian Boru, the High King of Ireland who fought off the Viking invaders at the Battle of Clontarf a thousand years ago was killed while praying to the Christian God. An equally admired 17th century general, Owen Rua O'Neill, told his troops at the iconic Battle of Ben Burb, Your word is Sancta Maria, and so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, advance. Even St. Patrick, who came to this island around 1600 years ago or so, bringing Christianity, is still remembered over a millennium and a half later in the form of St. Patrick's Day. And yes, I already know what people are going to say. Ah sure, St. Patrick's Day is just a piss up, it's just an excuse to get plastered, it's all commercialized, it's mainly an American thing. And yes, that may be true in very recent history, but for hundreds and hundreds of years, Irish people did remember the feast days of this man and St. Bridget and a whole host of other Christian saints with reverence because they took it seriously. And that's how these traditions have lasted as long as they did. We talk about the Book of Kells as a symbol of Ireland, forgetting that the Book of Kells is an illustrated copy of the Christian Gospel, which was made by Irish Christian monks. 
I mean, look around this country. You can't throw a stone without hitting a round tower, a high cross, or a monastery. The Irish phrase dia gwit is translated as hello, but literally speaking, dia means God and gwit means with you, God with you. It's even part of our national greeting. The preamble to the constitution invokes the authority of Jesus Christ as the source of our rights. People complain about the number of religious schools in Ireland, but did you ever stop to think who built the schools? There's a reason they're everywhere and they didn't grow on trees. There's a reason there's a church on every street corner and it's because Christianity is a huge part of Irish culture and has been for well over a millennium and a half. At this point some will probably say, oh so I suppose you respect paganism then and the old Irish Celtic faiths with druids and all, expecting to catch me out or something. And my response to that is, yes, of course I respect the Celtic faith. It's a part of our history and a part of our national identity. I've advocated repeatedly in the past for making movies about the old Irish legends. I wish Bord Falce would immortalize these stories in film. Imagine Cú Cullen on the silver screen riding into battle on his chariot against the forces of Connacht in Antoine Bocúlainne. The stories of Fionn McCool and Nefiana. All of these tales are a part of us, they make us who we are and they should absolutely be preserved and passed on to our children for generations to come. As a Christian I have absolutely no disrespect for any part of Irish history, but let's acknowledge and respect then the role that Christianity has played in shaping this nation too. When politicians fail us, we don't give up on the Irish Republic or the Irish nation as a whole because the Irish nation is bigger than our politicians. And so too is the church and the Christian religion bigger than evil men and women who attempt to defile it. We have people in this country who want to deify Irish rebels and rightly hold them up as the heroes they were while demonizing their most cherished beliefs. In what way can we say that we respect men like Podrick Pierce if we disrespect the faith that they love and stood for? People want to mock Christianity and say, ah yeah, a bunch of old grannies with rosary beads praying to Jesus. Who cares what they think about anything? You know who else prayed the rosary? The Easter Rising rebels, the volunteers in the flying columns. You know who else prayed to Jesus? Almost every one of the Irish heroes who died in the cause of Irish freedom. They will be spinning in their graves if they could see the way their faith is mocked today. So if you want to attack Christianity, like RTE recently did with that disgusting sketch, or remove the Angelus from daily life, or just generally insult the Christian religion, just be aware that you are also mocking something that was incredibly important to Irish heroes, Irish traditions, and most of your own ancestors. You're basically saying that most of the people that you're descended from were either stupid or immoral for believing in this stuff. This attack on Christianity is yet another facet of the media and politicians attack on Irish culture more broadly and sadly many normal people have fallen for it. Again, nobody has to believe in God, clearly. Your beliefs are none of my concern and you can think whatever you want, it's a free country. But don't tell me you're a patriot or a nationalist and then insult and deride the beliefs of this country's greatest rebel heroes. The word patriotism comes from the Greek patrios, which means father. It means respect for those who came before. I respect my forefathers and I respect their faith and so should anyone who claims to love their country, whether they personally believe in that faith or not. Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it, please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.